common requirement in any web project is a need to filter data based on the current logged in user. The Alpha Software blog included a couple articles on how to filter a grid with user information, as shown here. This video will show a different method to get the user information for a filter. In this example, the username of the current logged in user will be found and then used to get other information to place in a filter. First, we'll examine how a grid is built to apply a filter. This grid shows invoices for the current user. It is based on an Alpha DAO data source, which in this case is an access database. It uses a query with a join to get the desired data and has a filter on customer ID using an argument. You define the argument. It is named customer ID. Its data type is numeric because the customer ID in the table is numeric. We'll get its value from a variable. The variable in this case will be a session variable named customer ID for convenience. If the session variable does not exist, we must set a default value. In this case, it is set to a value that cannot exist for any customer ID in the system. Therefore, if the session variable is not found, we should return no records. If we look at working preview, where there is no session variable, we see indeed we get no invoices. Next, we must populate the session variables. We will do this on the index page, which is the first page that opens and also contains the login component. We set two session variables. One of them is customer ID, which is numeric. It is set to zero for the default value to return no records. The second session variable is named customer name, which is simply used for display purposes to show information about the customer. Other session variables could be defined here to hold other values from the customer record, such as address, company name, etc. If we scroll down the source code, we can find the section that actually runs the login component. There are a couple possible actions when the login component is run on the page. The login may fail, in which case the current page is redisplayed. In that event, this variable redirect URL would be blank. If the login is successful, redirect URL will have a value as the nor user is normally redirected to another page. Therefore, the code section after the if statement to determine if redirect URL has a value is a good place to get user information and set the session variables as a user should be logged in at this point. The first step is to set a local variable named current username. We're going to populate it using the function a5ws get current user. If someone is logged in, this should now have a value. There are conditions where a login may fail and redirect page may still be specified, so the code checks if there is a current user. If not, the default values in the session variables are not changed. Next, we will define arguments. We will set one argument for username using the current username. Then we use a function named sqllookup to find the value in the customer table. We have a name connection named Alpha Sports. We're searching in the customer table. We're using a filter, username equals the argument username, and we're going to return the customer ID. If a user is found, customer ID will have a value greater than zero. Therefore, we can then populate the second session variable for customer name using a similar process, again with SQL lookup. In this case, we've set an argument for customer ID, and we've used a filter on customer ID. However, we still could have used the same filter as used above on username to get the same record. After we populated the session variables, we can continue with the redirect as seen here. The next page will show how we're going to use the display session variable. We're going to place some text above the grid component on this page. And we're using a header tag. We're going to output some customer text. And we're going to use the session variable to give the customer name. Whenever a session variable is referenced, some tests should be run to verify the session variable exists before using it. In this case, we'll use a function named variable exists to determine if the session variable exists. If it does, we output the value in the session variable. If not, we output a blank. If we go to the login, we can log in as a user and see how this works. We will log in as one user here. As we can see, we have populated the display value for their name, and we're going to show two filters based two invoices based on their filter. If we log in as another user, we find we have a different name here at the top for the display value. We've also found two different invoices. This completes the process to set a filter based on values for the current logged in user.